Module 15. Pins. The microbit has pins that let your microbit send messages to other devices and receive messages from devices. Look at the metal strip at the bottom of the microbit with the holes in. Each of these are individual strips in another pin. The large ones are most commonly used and you can attach clips to them to connect to other devices. These pins can be inputs and outputs. There are lots of pins that you can research, but we'll look at using a few here to get you started. Pins 0, 1 and 2 are input and output. They can detect if you have touched that pin or if it is receiving a signal, e.g. from a crocodile clip, and they can send data out to other devices through them. 3V is for power. You can connect this to another device using a crocodile clip to give it power from your microbit. This could be used to power a motor, for example. GND stands for ground. This completes the circuit when you have connected 3V to another device. ADC stands for Analog to Digital Converter. This is a piece of hardware that is usually built into other hardware that turns analog signals to digital and digital signals to analog. But what does this mean? Analog is data that can be of any value and is how we experience the world. We have sound waves and colours that we experience that are all analog data. Think of a dimmer switch for a light bulb. The light can be any value from completely off to fully on and everything in between. This is like analog. A light switch is either on or off. This is like digital. Computers can't understand everything. We have to program them to understand what we want them to do. This usually means that they can't understand every single possible sound value and colour that ever exists. There are too many values. Instead, we digitise the data. We turn it into binary that the computer can understand. The analog to digital converter records the analog inputs at set intervals. For example, in a sound wave, it might be 1000 times a second. The value it records is stored in binary. This means that not every single sound is recorded, but it's very unlikely you will notice any difference. So why is this important? The microbit and other devices, such as a speaker, understand digital data. The pins can read in and send out, both digital and analog data as input, depending on what is sending the data. They use an ADC to translate between the two. This code will check pin 0 and work out if it has been touched. If it has been touched, it will return true. Otherwise, it will return false. These are Boolean values. This statement can then be used in a selection statement. You can check if the value is true or false. If it is true, you could perform an action. This program uses iteration on line 5 to run continuously. The code which you want to run continuously needs to be indented, like on line 6. Line 6 has the selection statement. If pin 0 is touched, if the function returns true, then pin 0 image will be displayed. Remember that the if on line 6 needs a colon on the end, and the code you want to run when it is true, which is line 7, must be indented. Pins 1 and 2 can be accessed in the same way. Just change the 0 to a 1 or 2. To test the program, you will need to be holding GND to complete the circuit, and then touch the pin. Connect your buzzer to your micro bit by joining pin 0 to the positive or in connector on the buzzer and then connect the GND to the negative or GND connector on the buzzer. A buzzer can only output one sound and it is either on or off. If it only has two values then it's boolean but this time instead of true and false the buzzer uses one and zero. The buzzer is connected to pin 0, so on line 4, we start the code with pin 0, dot write, underscore digital. This is the function to send the data, and the 1 in brackets 
means we are sending sound. This will only output for a very small amount of time because the program then ends. So if you want it to last longer, you will have to put it in an iteration. The second code loops forever, outputs a sound, waits for one second, then tells the buzzer to stop outputting by sending the value zero. The program will loop again and output the noise, wait, then stop, and repeat forever. In this third example, we don't tell the program to loop forever. We use a counter which is X. This will loop 10 times. All the code inside the loop will run each time and when it has looped 10 times, it will stop.